important to understand that if you have something that you're looking forward to do, that will hopefully give you a reason to not ever give up. Okay, let's go. Hey, it's Dr. Brian here. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Coaching to Change. I hope you can hear me okay. Today, we're going to talk about something that's pretty important. Now, as you know, I am a developmental health coach, developmental health coach. And that relates to me providing at a foundation the evolution of working with somebody that we can build them up and be able to leverage what it is and how they think, how they work on things, how they do things, but at the same time, build them up from platform. So when I say platform, I'm talking about from at the lowest level we can go. So we can understand exactly why they do what they do. What is it that they need to do to be able to evolve? I love the aspect of taking it to as low as I can go so I can be able to understand them because we're going to, this is going to be a long relationship. This is going to be something that we're going to have to work on together for us to help you understand. Okay. So like, why do I have the, the experience to do this? Well, besides being a coach for about nine years, I'm also, after I left the military, I got my education. I got I have, <laughs> as a professor, I should know, speak correctly. I have uh, my bachelor's degree in business administration. Uh, I think it's business management, actually. I have an executive MBA. I have a doctorate, a PhD. I've been a, a professor since 2000 and let's see here. I think I got divorced, uh, divorced in 12. So probably like nine, 2009, I've been a professor at the higher level university and I've taught undergrad, grad, and I even worked on dissertation panels. So I've, I've been there, done that. And I've worked with Fortune 500s, consultants with Fortune 50s, etc. So when it comes to aspects of business, I've been divorced, I've been married, so when it comes to relationships, I have kids, yes, so when it comes to parenting, I mean, let, I can go on and on and on. The point is that there's a evolution of experience that I bring. And to sum it up when you're relating to mental health, I am a military veteran. I served with the US Army, Airborne Rangers, Special Ops Unit, and basically been there, done that. So the level of knowledge and experience that I come to the table with is a plethora. However, I'm a student of myself. I'm in the front of the line. I'm the first person in line. And I do that because I'm very, very transparent so I can be able to learn and build from there. So I can take that experience, that knowledge, take the what I'm researching and I try to apply it and help other people. So that's what I'm doing. I do that. I have been doing that for about nine years and I've been very lucky to have really good mentors. I've been really good having good clients and I've been able to basically take this and circle it back. And that's where we're at now. This is my third podcast and I'm off and running. I've actually, for the first time, I've truly put a team together of people that around me to help us take this to the next level because there's definitely a purpose and a need. I am hiring coaches, I'm training coaches, I'm certifying coaches as a master trainer and a coach. This whole thing circles back to trying to give back, which is why as a doctor, I do that for free. 
So you guys are just getting a snapshot of all this at once. But the thing is, I say that because the topic we're going to talk about is personal growth. Now, that's only because I just don't care. Not I don't care about you and then definitely not about I don't care about the topic. It's just that I don't care about trying to be formal as I do this. But we are going to go into personal growth because as a uh, coach, especially as a developmental health coach, my job and responsibility to my clients, to myself, is to keep focused on things that's necessary for us to evolve. Um, specifically as it relates to mental health, if you're struggling, it's necessary to have something to do, something to look forward to. I had a really, really close, um, well, at the time she was my therapist, um, but she evolved into being a friend. And <laughs> if you if you read my other books or if you heard my other podcasts, you know that, I, you know, psychiatrists and psychologists are not my favorite people. However, I am studying to become a psychologist and I plan on having that third hat um, in not too far future. But she being my psychologist, I don't think she was like, psych- no, she wasn't a psychiatrist. She didn't uh, prescribe, but she told me something and I've had a lot of them. I've had a lot of them. Any veteran who has probably done or seen what I have would have a vouch for me that we go through them like, you know, like you go through dry cleaners. I mean, there's always a new one coming through VA. But this particular therapist of mine, um, we'll call her Dr. G, she probably out of all the advice and all the information I've ever gotten from somebody, she probably gave me one of the best, best advices that I've ever, ever had. And she told me that you basically need to have a purpose every day. You wake up and have a purpose. So with that, knowing that, it's important to understand that if you have something that you're looking forward to do, that will hopefully give you a reason to not ever give up. So let's start with learning. That's a personal passion of mine. I love to learn. Like for me, it's waking up and having a purpose. That couldn't be more genius in her wisdom to share with me. And what I did was taking that knowledge that she shared, I basically had a plan. Like that was the whole strategy. It was get up in the morning, go for a walk. Well, I couldn't do that very well because my plantar fasciitis, my knees and everything else that a airborne ranger will suffer from prevented me from being able to walk very far. So I couldn't do that. Uh, I didn't get very far. And then when I was walking, I was isolating myself. And then uh, my brain is spinning with all these different scenarios and things. And I just didn't like that. So I hated that part. Um, Next was taking on the concept of just being able to volunteer your time. Okay, volunteer. I can do that. And I still do that. I volunteer on a regular basis. I got my medical degree and I decided that I'm going to volunteer. But even before I became a doctor, I was volunteering. I was with the Boys and Girls Club. I coached golf. I did all these different things my entire life. And I didn't even realize why I was doing it. I just did it. It was just something about me that I just wanted to help others and do things. So I did. I was volunteering. And by doing that, you're experiencing new things. You're experiencing you know, different uh, people, you're learning, meeting different people. And I've evolved from that even to this present day by going places. And that allowed me to, you know, be creative. By being creative, I was able to do the podcast. I was able to, you know, focus on learning more about mental health. And from there, I made health a priority because again, in addition to having a purpose every day, you also wanna be physically healthy. So that was something to consider. I mean, it's a process of looking inward and concentrating on ways to better yourself. So, I mean, I want my clients to learn and achieve that. I mean, I talk about it in my second book. I talk about, and it's actually going to be discussed in detail on my next book relating to somebody taking control. 
I want my clients to learn. I want readers to understand. I want them to be able to take this information and being able to learn how they can manage it and be able to pursue it without having my help. I just give you the groundwork. I give you the layout. I'm the architect. And then from there, you go ahead and you do what you got to do and build on. That is the goal. Because at the end of the day, and again, I'm going to talk about this in detail in my next book, in detail, where it's all about you as a person having to be accountable and taking responsibility. That's, you know, focusing on rebuilding your habits and the ways you're thinking, um, developing your problem solving skills, practicing self-compassion. I mean, it's all about fostering your mindset. And that is exactly what it's about when you are being coached. A coach will do that for you, but I want you to be able to do it yourself. I want you to learn the tools and I want you to be able to do that because in the end of the day, I can't be with you 24 seven. I'm available 24 seven and I'll support you, but you have to be able to pick up the pieces that I'm going to basically leave out there and that personal development, you looking inward and concentrating on ways that you can improve, things you can do to improve yourself and be better because I'm going to give you all the tools necessary. I study, I learn, and I have been there, done that. So I want you to be able to. I've already been a consultant for Fortune 500. I've already made really good money. I've already had successful companies. I have done quite a bit in my life and I'm actually very proud of. And there's a lot of things that I'm not proud of, things I've screwed up, marriages. So I get it. So I want to be able to assist you so you don't have to make the same mistakes. That's one of the things I talk to my kids about, especially my um, my son. I don't want him to go through what I went through. So it's, it's necessary for him to understand what to do. Um, it's not a simple process by no means. Um, the techniques used to connect with your inner self, being able to understand yourself, being able to choose the right path. These are not easy decisions. There, nothing is easy. If this world was easy, trust me, we all be multimillionaires, right? But there's only so many people who could be multimillionaires. There can only be so many people who change the dynamics of how the world exists. But, you know, there's only one Steve Jobs. He was a visionary. There are a lot of visionaries out there, but not to the level of what he had did. And there are people out there who have their role in this world. What is your role? What is it we can do to figure that out? And again, the whole point of personal growth is being able to understand that and finding out what that is. True development, you know, I, I ask you that to engage in honest self-reflection. That's what's necessary. <laughs> I had to do that. I literally had to do that for myself. Like you cannot deny who you are. You cannot deny your strengths. You cannot deny your weaknesses. But you have to be able to understand who you are as a person. Um, and then from there, you start doing this again, as I mentioned, the self-analysis. And you start establishing goals at the same time. And this is not a short process. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, so as a coach, I'm going to work with you and it's going to take time. And you're going to build and build and build. And we're going to do that together again, giving you the tools. And my goal is that once we get to a certain point and you understand, you're going to be able to do this on your own and take off and do this. Your personal development is definitely worth it. Striving for growth and continuous learning, being able to push yourself, um, more specifically, push yourself out of a comfort zone. I have a, I have a client right now. Well, technically, she's not a client anymore. And um, we just had a recent more she's more of a friend now um per se because we had gotten to a point where there's some other things that we're working on but as a more of a private consult that i'm doing not so much coaching we are tackling some personal trauma so when we start crossing into that i am not so much doing coaching as i am uh working on the trauma side and focusing on the mental health side so this is a very unique situation it relates to um abuse it relates to um you know fear and these things 
is where you start having to really understand how to communicate what buttons to push when to push when not to push and today we had a huge accomplishment because we actually tackled something that was completely out of her out of her uh comfort zone but she did it she did it on her own i was kind of off to the side you know kind of helping out giving some tidbits but it was her driving it and i was so proud of her because she did something that she thought she could not do literally did not think that this was something she could achieve and accomplish and afterwards she was so proud and she thought she got a little upset with me because she thought i abandoned her when i mentioned how oh, i gotta go eat that's time for dinner but i did that on purpose i did it because i didn't want her to continue to you know self-divulge all the achievements to me i wanted her to process what she did i wanted her to basically digest what just happened. She hadn't had a chance to do that yet because the moment this particular situation ended, all she was doing was just, you know, spewing it out, spewing it out to me, but she hadn't processed what she actually did. I gave her a little bit, but then I was like, uh, I gotta go. And the thing was, I wanted her to be able to see and reflect and they go, wow, I did that. I achieved that, you know, and that's what was important because that level of confidence starts coming out and you have that resilience. I mean, I wanted her to embrace that change. I wanted her to understand and build on that self-awareness. I wanted her to understand the personal aspect, the personal uh, achievement that she did. Now she has more aspirations to do this again. I mean, that, that mountain, she just, you know, hurdled over is now just one of many. And the next, and it's not over. The circumstance is not over. She's going to have to deal with this again and deal with it again. But the confidence level and her level of what she accomplished, the confidence that came from that is going to be huge for her. So... You know, it's interesting. I said all this because we're talking about personal growth and I've been reflecting a lot of this related to work. And I reflected a lot of this related to mental, but you know, personal growth can come in all shapes and sizes in different circumstances. So as a coach, for me, it's helping that person understand where is it we need to identify personal growth? What is it? Because you may say, okay, I want to, I want to get this new position at work. Okay, but guess what? Maybe it's not work. Maybe it has nothing to do with your ability to do a job. It could be tied to something else that's holding you back. Again, as a coach, it is important to understand who you are so we can be able to start identifying what is necessary to help you achieve. So sometimes you think it's here and it could be over here. Um, in this case, case in point with this young lady, I mean, this is exactly what we were able to do. We were talking about something completely different. And then suddenly the level of motivation and awareness and visibility and everything that she thought that she suddenly she had this emotional drive that she says, I can do this. And again, we were talking about something else. Yeah, I'm good at what I do. I'm an, and, I, and the reason why I say that is not to be egotistical and narcissistic. It's just that I've been there. I have, I've seen so much, you know, um, I have done so much. I've seen a lot and I apply layers and layers of knowledge and education. And I, I try to do my best to ensure that what I have researched, studied, and I continue to study brings back information that you can be able to gravitate. You can be able to um, understand, be able to interpret and be able to apply it. Because at the end of the day, that's what I want you to do. If you're listening to me and you're actually somebody who follows me and you follow my podcast, you listen to my, uh, read my, re my reels on the social media and all that, you know I'm very transparent and this is all about, you know, giving you tools so you can just achieve and be better. That's what this is all about. I get nothing out of this except that you're helping me by continuing to study and giving me some distractions so I can continue to 
be here myself, continue to grow, have a purpose. I don't coach because it's about making money. I coach because just like my title of this podcast says, I coach to change. You know, and I really believe in that. And I believe that being somebody who needed to change, continues to change, maybe I can do more by helping somebody else change. Pretty soon I'll, you know, I'll be on this podcast saying, yeah, I'm a psychologist. I'm a, you know, I'm a doctor with various degrees. But at the end of the day, I'm a coach because I believe 100% that being a coach is truly a foundation of allowing somebody to understand and grow and build and perform. So keep watching, keep listening. Uh, My name is Dr. Bryant. This podcast is called Coaching and Change. I'm on all the social medias. My website is drarenpbryant.com. Please go to the website. You'll see that the credentials are there. The information is there. I had a great mentor, Barry Fowler, who opened the door for me and taught me what he knew and continued to learn and educate. And I'm still here and I'm hoping that I will be here tomorrow. And if you continue to listen and follow and subscribe, I will continue to share what I can. All right. So again, if you think that somebody's not listening, that's not true. Somebody's always listening. If you're thinking about suicide or you're thinking of, you know, you're depressed or you're isolating yourself or you have high anxiety, give me a call, reach out to me. Somebody's always listening. And some it's somebody's not just me, but I am here. <music> Mm-hmm.